signed in. So all summarized. Right. Officer reports. Uh, nothing from the president. How about treasurer? Uh, still have the thirteen thousand plus in the checking account. Has it gone anywhere? Yeah. Secretary. Secretary, we still have ninety members. There's no change. Okay. We change the dates on them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Will do. It makes my job easy. Okay. Well, I don't have any others here. Uh, committee reports. Uh, stamp sales. Sales. Um, the. Uh, I left it at home, of course. Uh, well, we've had about $66 in APS sales this month. Um, they'll go back tomorrow or Friday, and Any we'll get a sales? new circuit next week. Any local sales, number sales? Uh, no, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, there's uh, who bought some local did sales? Jessup, anyway. Did Jessup bring some? No, uh, Jeff wasn't. Uh, so I bought some. Yes, that's right. I haven't put any books together. I just don't have the time. I mean, I think so many hours. But, but Cy, Cy took some out of the book, out of the, one of the books, and it's from mine. Of it, most of the U.S. lately, but I don't even have enough to do a U.S. book. But right the, some of them was Jeff. Yes. Uh, expo. We got a expo meeting uh, this uh, Saturday mm -hmm. at eleven o'clock at Spring Creek. Correct? Yes. And we eat first. Is that correct? Yeah. I think we eat first. Yeah. I don't eat lunch eight. anymore. And uh, so I'll show up just yeah. a little later, like right. 20 after. Okay. Well, Sorry, you're certainly welcome to come. Yeah. Um, first on Saturday. You get recruited into doing service. Oh, yeah. 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 Do not go to this office. Yeah. Fortunately, due to family concerns. Matters I can't attend because of family lunch Father's Day early. Oh, okay. Therefore, it's right it's okay. at the same time. Yeah. Also, okay. I can't be down there. Not even virtually. So, well, just send key. I mean, uh, send my. Well, I sent uh, Stan. You were CC on the email I sent earlier. Uh, I mean, judges wise, we're okay. Uh, for the ladies doing all the exhibit stuff, PR I work on. I like find places to put it. The Lynn's ad will be here later this summer. Okay, so my only thing was clarification on the awards for maybe themed exhibits or regular themed exhibits. You know, yeah, yeah, we didn't we need to bring that up. Yeah, I, I already put that in the email so that we okay. have two sets of awards for mini exhibits, you know, for the regular mini exhibits or those that are themed for okay. the show. And if present, mm -hmm. and, you know, uh, maybe a separate award for the best themed full frame or more exhibit. The thing is, those are hard. I mean, who has time in the nine months from when we decide to the show to have a full 16 or more, you know, full frame exhibit ready? Because unless you're already working on something that you don't know, yeah. it, it's hard to put a full frame exhibit together in, in nine, nine months. Yeah. Because more likely you'll have to buy everything that's needed unless you just happen to have the same stuff at home. But, you know, we got to have an incentive. We have a theme, but what do we do with the theme, if, you know, other than this? theme for the sake of the theme, right? So you know, need to have some incentive for people to come up with at least mini exhibits because that's nothing more than a show and tell. Four four pages is you know a little bit more effort for some. Well, this is something we'll, we'll discuss. At yeah. Yeah. yeah, you'll have your answer after Saturday. Right. Um, well, I think we did last year. Or did we last year only have one set of prizes for? We only had one, two, I think. Oh, regardless of. Yeah, we, we were downsizing last year. So. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be mailing out uh, 600 uh, uh, envelopes this year. Uh, I've got the list put together. So uh, that's a scrub list, that, right? That, that's um, down about uh, 50 from last year. That's a scrub list between TSDA and us and the Dallas Club or yeah. whatever, APS. Okay, newsletter. Peter, you're up. Well, almost ready. Uh, you know, I got two more pages to go, depending on who sends me something to print down on Friday. I'm waiting on wishes. Uh, you know, well, I keep promising to do it. Been there, done that. Some, some, someday you're going to get a surprise. <laughs> That's okay. okay. I got, I got, I got yeah. Weedman sent, I probably got another six, seven, eight articles from Weedman to plug in, and I've got at least 40 of my own that I can write. Oh, yeah. You know, and it, 
the thing is I never get around to writing the ones that already get set aside because I go, oh, here's something, and then I use write that one, and the other 40 just remain in my pile. But you know, I was reviewing stamps from Switzerland again, and again, I found a couple of things that I can uh, you know, write about, places I've been to, and so yeah. on. So it's just, uh, doesn't seem to ever stop. I mean, is it the next uh, dealer's show? Uh, this two, next weekend, not this one, but the fall. Yeah, there is a TSDA, the 25th and 26th. Well, go look for me a stamp that I've been to. So <laughs> Well, in a pinch, you know, we could always borrow an image from somewhere and just attribute it to well, that's where we found it. Yeah, because I didn't have a store. Yeah. What, the 1930 yeah. series? Or, <laughs> yeah. Okay, I got, I got, I'll, I'll, I'll work on that one in uh, South Carolina. Okay. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. What page? Yeah. Uh, I'm just kind of like an interface with uh, Jim, but we haven't had any any action on it uh, or any remarks about well, it. Somebody goes in and updates it. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like at least once a month, if not more. Um, you don't have to do a daily update when you don't have that many people looking at it. But it can't be static like the old one was. I mean, there was new information that Jim put in every so often, but. There was so much old stuff floating around everywhere that at a glance, somebody would say like, well, gee, this is like two year old information. Even though there was new stuff there, it was too much old stuff. So yeah, it, it was pretty jumbled up, but it's a lot cleaner now, so. Well, I guess that interface was inherited from whatever yeah. uh, Art had okay. done like 20 years prior, so. Well, uh, Rick, when you go in and look at the website, uh, do you, Updated any or no? You're, you're, I, you're completely out. I cannot update it. I can ask. I can request updates. Okay. And so make suggestions and whatever. But okay. Uh, so and those updates suggestions would go what to Evan or to, uh, to bring he has a lady assigned to it. Okay. And they go to her or to Jim. Okay. It's the same uh, with the newsletters. I can't update the site and just do whatever after you do, like. I still upload the newsletter to my own site anyway, yeah. and that literally takes me like I can do this in sixty seconds or less. You know, create a text, you know, Jew newsletter, make it a link, upload it, save, republish, done. Boom, I'm done. I mean, that's how long it takes for my own website. It shouldn't probably take any longer on the club's website, depending on the tool set they use. Okay, so you have uh, put a. a I've only newsletter. like last month. I I sent a request along with the attachment. And then they made it happen behind the scenes. And oh, I, okay. You know, you're still sending it out to members anyway, right? Right what? now. My newsletter? Yeah. Yeah, I still. Okay. In the mouth. So, and then I also upload it to the uh, groups that I owe site, which is the okay. catch all for so, every newsletter ever. Okay, so it's gotten fairly easier for you then because all you have to do is just send it off to these people. And right, I upload it to the whoever's behind the scenes at our site. I email okay. it to him and I. Uploaded to the groups, like the groups that I own site, yeah. Yeah. which has room for every newsletter right now, going back to 73, but that's limited to members only okay. right now. That's okay. Any any other uh, committee reports? Uh, this great turnout. Oh, you know, how about well, we all discuss it? So last we'll year we had. Well, sign doesn't know. I'm sorry. Who's going to <laughs> last year we had two years down. We had the plastic name tapes. Okay, Brevins. This year we're going to go to lanyards and not have Brevins. You have to deal with losing yeah. your name tag or, or putting all this yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, like I have a this you know, you know <laughs> since our, our theme is Western wear, you ought to go to a bolo tie. <laughs> <laughs> That'll throw well, a monkey wrench in the work for <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we're, we're to show and tell. So uh, I have nothing to show or tell. There's nothing for this young lady okay. here and that young lady there. You gotta have your collection. Yeah. Yes. I was gonna bring one of the uh, cards that the APS sent to us that are perforation gauges, but I forgot to pick it up on the way out the door. So. Wait a minute. They're sending us cards with perforations? Yes. Well, perforation gauges. Perforation it's similar to the ones that, that Peter showed. Are they that size, or are they more like a slightly oversized? No, it's card. it's like a card that'll yeah, like a baseball card size. Yeah, yeah. It'll I fit in your wallet. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
So it's got an APS logo on it, um, their education department. They sent us a, a stack of about uh, 50 or 60 of them. Okay, so these are to hand out at Yeah, this is, well, what we're gonna do is probably package them with the coloring books. Okay. For the new, more, new I think I said, like I showed last time, I had taken one of the old style ones, which I had two of that are similar. One was on metal, which is like gray, and the other one was the standard white cardboard one, and I just scanned it, and then I just cut and pasted it, and I actually can fit eight of them on a sheet of like medium card stock, so yeah. all you have to do is slice it out with a, with a, you know, well, with an exacto knife, and I, I checked that, you know, the, the purse, everything, it's, it's the exact size that it is, so it's a perfect copy of, of the physical ones that I had, and, you know, and I even had it in a local. <laughs> All right, cool. cool. Well, well, because this one just had some number NY 56 perfecto gauge on it. And this one says honor build. And I also have one that says Mystic Stamp Company on it. So I think everybody in the planet used the same layout you know, back in the day. So I figured that's a that's like you know copywriting a ruler, right? I mean, yeah. You know, yeah. Well, if yeah, anybody, why not just put our logo on it? We can use this if somebody wants it. If, if anybody knows where we can get some inexpensive magnifying glasses let me know uh sure you know cheap ones like, sell you a yeah i'm yeah, sure about five years. for three dollars and fifty cents like cheap magnifying glasses five x is usually about the best which are you know i bought from uh, i guess where my favorite country um so these actually have, a, well, this one, the battery's getting low. This one actually has a UV light in it, a regular light, and it's got a uh, 30X and a 60X. So, I mean, these wow. are, you know, you can see pretty good details with these. So, you can blind so yourself with them. bucks when you buy them online. I mean, I, you just have, you know, they, they call these a currency detecting jewelry identifying magnifier. Well, I use them for stamps, so, you know, yeah. and they work just fine. So, uh, and they're not expensive. I mean, they probably retail for 10 bucks somewhere, but you can order them from China for probably two or three dollars max. But they are very strong. So if you only need like 10x, then these are gonna be way stronger than that. But you don't see details. You check it out. Yeah. Well, I found that the, the Bausch and Long little magnifying glasses at a 5x are usually the best ones for uh, just general yeah. well, looking I at stuff. Well, I found that I had one for like over 30 years now. Uh, it's made of metal, while you can get the cheaper ones are plastic, but they're kind of like a C-shaped one that folds flat. And you unfold it, then, you know, the, the actual magnifying glass is maybe about this round, and so it would be about this much higher than whatever you're looking at. So it's probably a 5X maybe. But I use it a lot for for just intermediate looking at stuff, and it's actually good enough that uh, I've taken photographs through it, so I can hold up wow. a standard little small size mini digital camera, and I can take a magnified photo of something, which sometimes beats having to take it with a camera by itself and then yeah. trying to you know yeah. zoom in on it. I don't know. So okay. and those I don't know what those cost. Those are again probably fairly. Cheap. And they also include uh, along the perimeter edge, um, they include both a millimeter and an inch chart, so you can also you know, line stuff up. Sounds like a linen, linen test or linen. Uh, I don't know what yeah. it is. I, I've had it from a work perspective back when I worked in Switzerland in 1986, and they gave me one just to look at print quality because we were printing on foil and films. And I still have it and I still use it. It's, it's, it's great. Okay, uh, Skipper. I have. Uh, at Arlington, we we'll, in a couple of weeks we'll have an auction. Mm -hmm. I have the list, the preliminary list of auction lots that I have around. I haven't numbered them yet, um, but uh, this is. I don't know, uh, we've got forty-five lots, I think. Forty-four, oh, forty-five good. lots. Considering we've been out of the year, and that doesn't include Jeff uh, Jessup. Who usually brings, you know, a bunch ten or twelve boxes of stuff? That's and some of it's <laughs> really good. Yeah, you some get of it's cheap. Really bad. <laughs> and some of it, yeah, it's. Uh, it was, but uh, Brian Sandfield's donation. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just bought two big boxes with you know, I picked up yesterday. But they're actually, I mean, it's mostly covers and a couple of older loose items. But it's not really junk. I mean, it's decent giveaway stuff. But uh, anyway, so I and I'll call him to make sure he can do that. But that's uh, 
those are the that's the preliminary list and uh, and I may add some uh, some club lots to go through okay. some stuff that uh, and you know that probably not enough for silent auction but maybe for a few Good dollars for the, for the club okay. auction okay Did you give my lots yeah there's the last page Oh, where's the rest of the four pages. Friction on the table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You laugh at me. <laughs> well, I bought 10 more copies of the Jenny souvenir sheets, which I use a lot. I've bought probably a couple of hundred of those sheets over the years because I mail a lot of stuff that requires two dollars, four dollars, or eight dollars in postage. So they're nice because I can get to use up the bulk of postage with high value stamps and then you know just make up for it with a bunch of lower end stuff but not this shipment but the last one but this is from this ship the 10 that I bought three of well usually the envelopes are like this but three of the envelopes were like this so you look at it you know black is they were usually just printed one color black but mm -hmm. some envelopes are printed by color with the text in black but the stamp and what looks like some sort of a color line or maybe even green color, which is really odd. So they must have had more than one printing of the envelope. First I go, ooh, that's one of the good ones. But yeah. No, it was just the standard upside down one, not the right side up one, but they definitely have multiple printings on it. I mean, they would have had to make two different printing plates in yeah. each color. So I don't know why they did that. I didn't see anything else different about the outside or anything else. But I mean, if anybody wants them, I don't know, it'd be like, it'd be a neat little, one page exhibit just on this alone, but you know, if anybody wants to just pass these around. Um, today I was from our judge coming up, uh, Colin Frazier, he, he sent me a link to something and uh, he said that the AAP, AAP American Association of Philatelic Exhibitors has a uh, special exhibit uh, that they're hosting for, for US, United Arab Emirates, and Israel. So I guess exhibitors from these three countries, I, I briefly just looked at what's there. There's something like 15 or 20 exhibits from people around the world that you can access online. So all you have to do is go to aape2021.com slash exhibits, and you can download, um, I guess, PDF files or view them on screen. However, they haven't actually looked at them yet, but I would like to see what other people are, are writing about. I think one of the exhibits was about truthful states, which you know we all kind of cringe at those, but you know, the crucial states did, did have some valid reasons for some stamps, so I'll try to look at some of those exhibits uh, later. I imagine it will be up for a while. Uh, this is the summer of lots of stamps. We've already had two like in the last few weeks alone, so here's the June 3rd issue for the uh, Go for Broke, uh, the Amer uh, Asian American soldiers in World War II issue, and I was actually able to get it on the first day and got it canceled. And uh, a week later on June 10th, we have the um, uh, Emilio Sanchez, uh, some artist, you know, and four different stamps for him. In this case, I actually put all four of them on there and got them canceled. Again, first day of sale, not the first day of issue city, but, you know, it's kind of kind of nice to get these. And I think we have seven more stamp issues in the next six weeks alone. Oh, my gosh. And the duck stamp somewhere in there, too. So, eight, hey, you count that. So, it's just insane what they're issuing. Yes, just it is. June and through July and early August. Um, that's why it's not great. I don't know if anybody here is a member of Post Crossing. That's where, you know, um, you uh, sign up and then you can ask for a name and address to be given to you. You're usually going to be in another country. You send them a postcard and then they'll give your name to some other random person out there that will send you a postcard. Just, you know, not to become a pen pal, just to send a postcard. So usually you get a postcard in the mail. And I guess on my profile, it says I collect stamps not just postcards and i um, like car related stamps so this uh as she described herself old housewife from uh finland sent me a postcard with a oh, car thing in, inside the envelope rather than just by itself she used some really nice stamps which luckily did not get canceled there was a little pile of car related stamps in there as well uh -huh. the one that caught my eye was a customized, personalized postage stamp from Finland because it showed an old American car. 
Uh, I thought that was kind of a neat little thing. And then, uh, so this is a postcard from Finland advertising an American car. So apparently the sodos were sold in Finland at some point. Um, I thought that was kind of interesting and it's a nice little cover now. I don't know because it wasn't postmarked. Um, I didn't know, all I know is I received it on June 9th, but on the postcard itself, it was in there, she wrote uh, uh, April 18th. So it took like six weeks or wow. something like that. that nice? April 18th, May 19th, yeah, seven weeks to get okay. to me from Finland. I mean, assuming she mailed like the day after, uh, the 18th of April was a Sunday, so probably she mailed it on that following Monday. But anyway, I thought that was uh, that almost nice. like the car yeah. that stands for what she used to drive. Yeah, what is that anyway? I can't, uh, I'm not familiar with that, the base of that car. So it's like late 50s, early 60s. Yeah, you know, I think it's uh, a Dodge, isn't it? What brand is it like? It's no. Chrysler product. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. 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 Is it? Yeah. I mean, that's not. Huh? Changes. Uh, it's a touch. Oh, that one, yeah. Okay. I didn't even. I didn't even do that. Yeah. Well, that's a map of Finland, actually. And then I don't know what it is. They're running towards Finland. I don't know. It's a Chrysler. Yeah, it looks like a. So that could sound. Yeah. It could be. Yeah. Well, yeah. Finland has a post office uh, near the Arctic Circle, so that's kind of like their go to place for you to send something to Santa Claus and then have it come back because it's Arctic Circle. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like about a 1961 dollar. Oh, it is a project. I have a friend who whose parents had a 59 on the computer. And that's not he liked the hop on that. Yeah, thing. See that's yeah. the one they used in the movie. Yes. Yeah. 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 That killer. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
What's your name? What is the name? That's not, no, is that's, that's not, that's not a good question to ask. Me. <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. Hello? Those are the main basic construction questions. Yes. <laughs> that's good. Uh, oh, that's all I have for one. Okay, well, see, si, I hope you learned something. <laughs> yes. I'm going to touch every stamp you pass from now on. <laughs> uh, just to see what's going on. I have to get your story first, though. <laughs> well, uh, Rick, do we have a program? I guess not if we don't have a uh, display. I have a couple of videos. One of them is uh, Jay Leno's Garage with the uh, American Muscle Cars stamps and he has a postmaster general there oh, really? and they're discussing that Enjoy? so it's really huh Enjoy or a previous one? no it's a previous one yeah but uh it's really a pretty good video and then i have another one that shows a one cent magenta uh that was done in 2017 i believe that uh the lady that does a 5 30 news uh actually was on that one so these are the ones that sold this week. yeah that's the one that sold this week and, and if, if you guys aren't aware of that the one cent magenta from british guiana sold at a loss mm -hmm. it, it was originally sold through to stuart weitzman the shoe sales guy at nine and a half million dollars and by the time he paid commissions and everything on it, it was pretty close to pretty close to ten million dollars. Well, I mean, right. it kind of gets to the point of what they call stupid money. It's just yeah. there's a point to where yeah. it's just not well. It's it it's just... it kind of rebounded on itself yeah, this yeah. time because yeah. when it sold this time it sold for eight point three million. So he took a a, a one a one point two million dollar loss. I was I was reading the article um, in New York Times for the one that. He, he was like, I'm at the point where I've had it. I think he bought it in 2013 or 2014. 2014, I think, like yeah. And he's like, I've, I've enjoyed having it. Now I, I'm just going to sell it and use the money to do something. Well, he, he, sold three, he sold three treasures at the same auction. One of them was the uh, inverted Jenny plate block. Yeah, he had a block. And then he had a 1933 gold oh. dollar. And and the dollar actually made money. He he paid enough to cover his losses on the stamps. So. But that, yeah. that British Diana, every time I look at the pictures, I see it's like that's so dark red and murky. Yeah, it's, 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 it's an ugly stamp. Write that up just to see what you're looking at. It's just a red, dark red blob. At this point. And then everybody that has owned the stamp has actually written their name on the back of it or their initials. They acted on signature on the back of it. So yeah. Yeah. Privilege of ownership to get the yeah. Yeah. place the stamp on that. <laughs> so it was it's kind of interesting. There were several videos out this past week about that auction and uh, things leading up to it. I don't know if you guys are familiar with uh, Charles Epting and Michael Cortese. They do a, a video log called Conversations with Philatelist. And they actually went over there and actually got to pull the stamp out and take a look at it and and all of that. So it was pretty. It was a pretty interesting yeah, video. Was it New York, twenty sixteen. I don't remember whether that stamp was there or I was also in Smithsonian. It was on display in Smithsonian for a couple of years. Yeah, so, I've been there too, but I don't remember whether it was. I saw it there. I know I saw some pretty expensive stuff at, at New York, two thousand sixteen. Yeah. Well, it was only up in New York for the auction thing at uh, Sotheby's. That stamp has like the uh, article had like interesting things about that stamp. Apparently, it was lost after it was issued. They thought it was, they didn't have any specimens of that uh, log. And then a 20 year old kid found it in some log in 1873. And then, uh, and then that passed uh, on to other owners. And then at some point, during either World War One or World, I think it had to be World War One, it was seized as um, what you call collateral. Collateral, yeah, for like a few, you know, yeah. hundred thousand dollars. Well, they actually found a second one. Uh, oh, they did. Yeah, some some guy found a second one, and the owner of the of the original one, uh, okay. they they 
actually bought it from the guy and burned it. He said, I want, I want to own the original. That's the story. I mean, I'm, there's nothing that verifies that for sure, but that's the story. Yeah. So there's, there's some interesting things. That, that's quite a history behind that stamp, and it's quite a, quite a future, too. That, that's the actual only British Commonwealth stamp that the Queen does not own. Uh, she has a, you know, the royal collection does not have that in the in the collection, and rumors were that uh, Stanley well, Stanley Gibbons actually bought the, the stamp this time, and rumors were that they were actually going to you know be it as an agent for the Queen you know so it would go into the royal collection. However, Stanley Gibbons has since come out with a web page saying. If you want to be a part owner of this, we're going to be selling shares in it. Because apparently it took like one third of their total capital to buy that stamp. So uh, it's it's going to be interesting to see what happens with it. You know, it could be that you could be a, a part owner of it. Yeah, you're like selling shares in something that can grow in value. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or it could lose money again. <laughs> That, that gold coin that sold apparently is the only gold coin from that lot that you can actually, that's actually in private ownership. Yeah, that's it's actually legal to own yeah. because the government de demonetized gold coins right. back in the 30s or, yeah, or whatever. Any gold other than maybe like rings or chains, but there's no other gold coins, right? Something yeah. like that. Obviously, people were wearing probably gold jewelry, but you couldn't own gold coins. Right. Gold coins. Right. You were supposed to turn them all in. I think that happened. Like someone found like a lot of ten of those sometime like a few years ago, and the government had to actually escape them. Yeah. That lot, so. Not surprising. Your government no, takes everything. Why? Now you can't own that particular year coin, right? Yeah. Probably are. So anyway, it's been a, it's been an interesting week in the philatelic yeah. world. Yes, uh, Anything that makes collateral bubble to the top of it is consciousness. Right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, it's so under the radar for most people. I mean, a few years back, you know, I was trying to get a stamp club to win in my son's elementary school, and some father sitting next to me, and literally, I'm trying to sound like him now. It's like, oh, that's still a hobby. That's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this guy was like, I mean, way younger than me. I mean, so he was like maybe in his 40s, you know. You know, well, I, I did people see. Don't see stamps. I mean, you know, like, you know, they don't use letters. And you know, I'm I'm a member of that Quora website, and I just see like one well, consider a lot of. Uh, a lot of people say there's no such thing as a stupid question, but there are a lot of that I would consider stupid question because people are still. I mean, they're just so ignorant. Like, well, how many stamps does it take to mail something? You know, three ounces to here. I go, what do you mean? How many stamps? Do you mean how much? Is the postage rate for what you're mailing? Not how many stamps? Yeah. You mean one cent stamps, five cent stamps, two dollar stamps? What? what you, I mean, what's a stamp? You know, because oh, that's all that people know these days is a forever stamp. If yeah. Any, yeah, that's true. Um, and you know, how quick uh, does it take for an envelope to go from zip code one two three four to seven eight nine ten or whatever? It's like, well, how are we supposed to know that? You know, I mean, they're asking questions of. You know, things well, like, okay, that's where the USPS.com comes in handy. What's my zip code? It's like, well, I don't know. Where do you live? Yeah. 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 Well, tell everybody on Quora where you live so I can do your job and go to USPS.com, type in your address, and it gives yeah. me your zip code. Yeah. You know, I mean, there are questions like, come on, people, you know, I mean. Well, I'm saying most kids, they would just get their phone out, call up, you know, Wikipedia or whatever, and ask the question and get the answer. But here they're asking a social yeah. media site, which is really geared best geared towards opinions, not facts. Because facts we can already look up elsewhere. It's like, okay, you you ask a question like, what's the cost to mail a two ounce envelope from here to there? It's like, well, gee whiz, I don't know. Guess what I have to do? Go to USPS.com and look it up. You know, yeah. go up. And I'm gonna tell people really like, you know, their answer to these questions is like, well. Yes, I could tell you, but yes, why don't you why don't go to USPS.com and, and <laughs> type it in ourselves. You know, right. 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 do your work for you. 
<laughs> and you would you just spend time asking the question at this site once you just go to the site that actually has the answer because they're yeah. factual answers not opinions like well what's the best way to ship this well that's an opinion yeah. that would be you know people could say hey i you know if you're shipping this type of item let's discuss because the postal service screws it up if you do this and this and this you know but you know sometimes <laughs> i don't even bother answering them because it's like futile and i know why that site will pay some people to ask questions because then other people answer and the more people answer then you get like a fraction of a penny for every answer you get so people ask the same person that asks like hundreds of questions like you know how long does mail between this zip code and zip that zip code take and then you know a few minutes later how much for, how long for from Bethesda mail into here and they're like they like okay you can ask a gazillion questions for weird things that are all the same and the only reason they don't care about your answer they just want other people to answer so they can earn a couple of dollars on the side for stuff that's just useless crap as far as i'm concerned i mean it is a good money. site but you know they're you know and a lot of people do answer questions in earnest i'm just looking at the questions going like these make no sense okay okay well i guess it's time for the drawing yeah. and uh, <laughs> how many people we have two from last year and we have the two from this year okay <laughs> So, so yeah, all, all the All right, so there's four to do away, and there's there's three of us who are going to be disappointed. <laughs> 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 With my luck, I'll be one of those two. Oh, she's been pretty lucky. Yeah. The last time. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. not a sign. Give us a number. Three. Number three. Five thousand two hundred ninety. That's a size number. <laughs> I just numbered it here, so we could not have seen it. Number five is Stanley Christmas. All right. Same bad channel. <laughs> do, do you know the reference to that? Did you watch Batman 50 years ago? No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 